In this example, we will look at a ball bearing that has both axial and radial load. You know when we have a ball bearing that's subjected to both radial and axial load, the equivalent radial load is arrived at by using this equation. So now we're just changing our view and for this example, we're going to assume the outer ring is what rotates and the inner ring stays stationary. So once again, we're strictly analyzing a ball type bearing in this example. Okay, so now let's do an example as promised for a bearing that's subjected to both axial and radial loads. And we're looking specifically at ball bearings here. So we're looking at a ball bearing and if we read the question, we have an angular contact ball bearing with inner ring stationary is loaded with 3.5 kilonewtons in the axial load. So this is in the axial direction and a 6.5 kilonewton radial load. The outer ring rotates at 480 revolutions per minute. The application factors 1.0 are C10 load is 62 kilonewtons, our C0 load is 46 kilonewtons, and the equivalent radial load in kilonewton is most nearly what? We want to find the equivalent radial load. So when we have both what? We have axial of 3.5 kilonewtons and radial of 6.5 kilonewtons for a ball bearing, contact ball bearing, we want to convert these into an equivalent radial load. So we're going to use certain equations provided in the reference handbook. So we also know, let's write down what we're given here. We need to know what we're given and we know our 3.5 is going to be axial. I'm going to call it F sub A for axial. So it's 3.5 kilonewtons. Then we have for the radio, let's call it F sub R. This is going to be 6.5 kilonewtons. Then we have the outer ring rotates at 480. So the rotation here. I don't think we'll need this for this question, but it's given. So on that V, you might not use certain information, but that's given the application factor is 1.0. We're going to need our C10. So this C10 is going to be 62 kilonewtons. And we know this is what we essentially determined when we only had radio load, right? So if we look in the reference handbook, this is going to be the C value. And it's the minimum required basic load rating that we determined when we only looked at the specifically let's say if we determined it for this specific question we'll only look for ball bearings right so we would have to use a of three but this is that value the c10 and we're also given the c naught which is specific to the type of bearing we're looking at which we usually get from a manufacturer or from tables right so this is going to be 46 kilonewtons so now we're given all of this and we want to find the equivalent radio load. So we want to find P sub E. And we know that we can do this by using the reference book for bearings. So we're on this page now. So we have a ball bearing is subjected to both actual and radial loads. Radial and actual load. An equivalent radial load must be used in the equation. So this is how we arrive at the equivalent radial load. It's going to depend on this x and y coefficients. It's going to depend on the v value and the load, right? The radio and axial. So the x and y co coefficients account for the difference in whether axial load is going to dominate. And this also depends on this e value. So these are the coefficients that we will determine so if we have this ratio being greater than the E value, we'll use these to find our X and Y coefficients. If we have the ratio, this ratio specifically that we will determine is less than the E value, we'll use these coefficients. So what do we mean by this E value? So let's quickly denote that in a graph. So let's say I have my Y axis, X axis, on the y-axis, it's going to be our equivalent and p equivalent. We take v over fr. And on the x-axis, I'll do fa over the v over fr. And we know what's going to happen here is we start at a slope and we continue to increase at a slope. 
and I'll draw my line here and I'll go down and we know we're gonna go down on the x-axis to some e value and this will be my x value here so this is my x and this is gonna be one here so we know based on laboratory tests we're gonna have certain data points and we just did a line of best fit here so based on this graph we know at some e value the axial loads when we have a combined loading of axial and radial load there's going to be this threshold limit which is denoted by our e value there where the actual load will be irrelevant so we're not accounting for this actual load once we are at this e value so this is the point where this actual load is going to be irrelevant for this combined loading type of situation so that's where that comes into play and that's based on lab results but to focus on this we know we need to find this e value then we will use what defined in the book based on this e value we will check this ratio here if it's greater than e we use these for the coefficients for the x and y and we can determine e by using this equation right if again if it's less than e here we'll just use x is 1 y is 0 so this is easy but I believe for this one it's obviously gonna be this one to show us the exact steps so we know now we need to find this e this E, once again, is the threshold where the actual load is going to be irrelevant. So let's find the E value first. So this is step number one. Our E value is going to be given by that equation in the handbook, which is this one, right? So I take my 0 0.513. We take our actual load divided by the C naught value which is given raised to the power of 2.0.236 so our E value is 0 0.513 our FA the actual load is 3.5 kilonewtons given above the C naught value is 46 kilonewtons and we raise this to the power of 0 0.236 so the E value here is 0 0.279 so this is here so it's gonna be around 0 0.279 so what we want to do now is check are we in this region after or are we before the E value so the way we do that is based on this ratio right so based on that ratio which is let's go back to the handbook just to show you it's this ratio right so it's FA divided by V over FR. But what's V? So V is going to be important because we know the life of the bearing is going to be affected by whether the inner or outer race is rotating. So if we know if the inner ring is rotating, V equals 1. If the outer ring is rotating, V equals 1.2. In this question, what is it? Let's read the question. We know that the inner ring is stationary. That means what? the outer ring is rotating the inner one is stationary what's rotating is going to be the outer ring so in this case what's our v value the v value is 1.2 because the outer ring is rotating so now let's solve for this ratio so step 2 f a over v over f r and for f a is 3.5 kilonewtons v is 1.2 right the outer ring is rotating and fr is 6.5 kilonewtons and for this you should get around 0 0.449 so now let's check is this bigger than e it is it's 0 0.449 that's bigger than e so this is greater than our e value which is 0 0.279 that means what we have to Determine the coefficients x and y here to ultimately solve for the equivalent radial load by using these equations. So x is just going to be 0 0.56 and y we can determine by using this equation. So let's do that. Step 3. We know x is going to be 0 0.56. 
and y is going to be determined by taking the 0 0.840 we take this trace of the multiplied by 3.5 kilonewtons divided by the 46 kilonewtons which is our C naught and we take all of this raised to the power of negative 0 0.247 so do not forget to do this here raise it to the power so we can solve for y now and you should get 1.59 that's our coefficient so now we have our x and y coefficient the last step is just use that equation right so we can find the equivalent radial load plug it in what we need so let's go back the equivalent radial load p equivalent and we'll plug in our x value 0 0.56 and we plug in the 1.2 and we take that so with the 1.2 is what the 1.2 is my v value right for add or ring rotating fr is given y we know fa we know right so now we take times 6.5 kilonewtons which is my fr plus my y which is 1.59 times my fa 3.5 kilonewtons so you can solve for the equivalent and you should get 9.93 kilonewtons so this is the answer here and I believe it should be A. And that's all for this one. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.